Hello to the GCN community. My name is Mitch Gardner and this is the fifth episode of the GCN A to Z. For the letter E, we are going to look at equalization, or EQ for short. Firstly, what exactly is EQ? This is the process of boosting or cutting particular frequencies within a signal of music, whether it is on a MIDI channel or an audio file. You can boost frequencies of the human hearing, which is from 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz, or 20 kHz. Why might we use EQ? If you EQ a particular instrument, it might help it fit better in a mix. A good example is the French horn. If your horn library has quite rich mid-range sound, cutting these mid-range frequencies can help it sit better with the rest of the instruments. Another reason as well is that your libraries might require it, if it has been recorded quite brightly or if it doesn't have enough clarity for example. The same applies for instruments you may have recorded yourself. There are several types of EQ. The one you will have probably seen built into your workstation is a parametric EQ, which is what I'm going to show you now. So, what does an EQ plugin look like? Here is the built-in plugin from Logic Pro 10. Some will differ in layout, such as the FabFilter Pro Q, but all of them do pretty much fundamentally the same thing. You can see at the bottom of the EQ, there are six different frequencies. These six frequencies fall into different EQ bands, so these bands can filter out particular frequencies. Underneath is a decibel function. This function will tell you how much band is being boosted or cut, and the number underneath that is the Q, which is the ratio of the frequency that is central to the bandwidth. If you change the Q to be a larger number, it will have more of a narrow frequency, meaning that it boosts less of the frequencies around it. If you make the number smaller, the opposite effect happens, meaning it will affect more of the frequencies around the tip of the Q. A tip that pros do, and have done for some time, is to use a narrow band with a generally high Q value. This can sort problems with frequencies quite easily, but be careful as this can create the mix to become more unnatural. Another thing to be wary of is the 20 to 100 Hz region. Some cut this section to avoid any unwanted rumbles, especially with frequency collisions, but play with it and see what you find. You can divide an orchestra into the bands at the bottom depending on the family and the instruments. Let's start with the strings. If we use the low strings to start, patches that double like in Spitfire Audio's Albion 1 or the Metropolis Arc libraries from Orchestral Tools will have a good range in the 75 to 250 Hz area, and you might find that you don't need to boost this section. If it is becoming a bit too dominant, cut it rather than turn the volume down, as it will still have the string impact of the higher frequencies. Cutting between 250 to 300 Hz can prevent muddiness in your mix, especially if you are doubling samples. Violas can fill a gap between 130 to 1200 Hz. If you cut between this with either a high or a low Q depending on your mix already, this can also help with muddiness with the lower strings. Play around with this to find what works best for you. In this EQ, we can also see the 20 Hz are in here from the hum and the hiss of the recording. Be sure to cut these out so they don't collide with your bass frequencies. Violins 1 and 2 can be fussy depending on your libraries also. Boosts between 600 to 1500 Hz help them become more rich. Because they might be mic'd closer than other instruments, they will carry more clarity, which isn't a bad thing because they will sit closer to audiences in an orchestral concert format. A good area to boost would be between 2 to 4 kHz, slightly to provide the mix with more brightness to give it that extra bit of life. This will vary though, so play around and see what works better for you. The next section I'll look at will be the brass. If we start with the tuba, it'll be a little higher in frequencies than the low contrabasses and cellos and strings, between 100 and 900 Hz really. A tiny boost or cut at the 200 Hz mark can help provide it with fullness, especially with a slight bit of panning. Make sure it doesn't make the mix too boomy though with the other low strings. Trombones are a little bit higher in frequency to this, about 200 Hz to 2000 Hz. You can cut these at around 600 Hz to help them sit better, but it depends on the sound you would like. If you are looking for more a melodic trombone, then I would recommend cutting the lower frequencies and boosting the higher frequencies a little. A good library to try this with would be the Angry Brass library from Performance Samples. French horns have more of a mid-range, between 500Hz to 5kHz. Depending on your piece, it might require a boost in the brass if they are playing more mezzo piano or mezzo forte to provide your mix with warmth. If they are more like Thomas Bergeson style in High Seas, or John Williams' in the Whomping Willow Cue from Harry Potter and the Prison of Azkaban, where they carry a lot of bite higher up in the register, 
then cutting around the 1200Hz mark might be an idea to provide it with more power where higher frequencies would help more. Lastly is the trumpets. These are 1kHz and above really. You can boost or cut lower frequencies if it is a solo trumpet as they will be recorded closer. It depends on where you want them in the mix though. The further away you want them, the more power they need to carry. So I would say to do it in the 2500Hz area to bring them out more. With woodwinds, these can't be played generally as loud as the brass instruments, except high up in the flute, piccolo and clarinet. If we start low with the bass clarinet and contrabassoon, this won't be as low as the other low instruments I've spoken about because of their size being so much thinner and smaller. Around the 350Hz to 800Hz region can be boosted or cut whether you want them to stand out more, or boost the 150 to 200Hz area to provide more depth, but as always, be careful with the muddiness with other instruments. The bassoon is a very versatile instrument and can be used in the background or prominently at the front. The frequencies at the 400 to 700 hertz region can be cut to help them sit with French horns and lower woodwind instruments. If you boost the bassoons there, make sure that it doesn't become heavy with mids as this can become unnatural. Clarinets can be also rather versatile, but it depends on where you write it for. The lower side is rather midi like the bassoon for about one and a bit octaves, so from the lowest E note to a G sharp, a compound third higher up. So the same would apply as the bassoons. Oboes are rather nasally, so it can be harder to mix with more mid-range, but cutting the frequencies at around 1000 to 1500 Hz helps for me, so give it a try and see what you think. Flutes and piccolos are above 1 kHz, but can be very bright depending on the library, so be sure to use an analyzer to see where the peak frequencies are and make sure to cut them out so they sit better. This one peaks at near 1100 Hz, but that is probably because of the closer mic. If you use a Decatree mic, it would be more balanced. Boosting at the 2 kHz area can help them stand out if they have a melodic line with other instruments, for example. For percussion, it can really vary on the feel you want. Military percussion has a very tight snare drum, so it requires a lot of mid-range to be cut from about 300 to 750 hertz. Piatti or crash cymbals have a lot of high frequencies to them, but because they are generally further away in the orchestral positioning, be sure that they aren't too bright so they don't become the main subject. Look at this Albion 1 patch where it has frequencies all the way to 20 kilohertz. Cutting at the 2K region will help it sit better with higher frequencies instruments. Also consider adding a bit of high cut in the 20 kilohertz area. This is so that it helps put the cymbals in place on the orchestral stage as they lose frequencies from further back. Triangles are very high in frequencies and are very easy to be too bright and loud because they'll be mic'd quite closely in a sample library recording, so be sure to cut these for the real effect. As you can see in this Cine Samples Triangle sample library, the frequencies are 3.5 kHz onwards, so mess around with it and see what suits your track best because it will vary. The final bit of percussion I will mention is the timpani. Mid-range is quite important with the timpani because of their size. They punch through well and help with elements like pizzicato strings. From 300 to 900 hertz is a good area to play with. Cutting is good for louder sections because boosting in this style can cause frequency collisions, which can sound rather fake. You can try boosting the lower side at 150Hz if you want a real impact on low notes from the low D to G where they play fortissimo, but make sure they don't power through so much it's like the timpanis are being played on the conductor's podium. So that's it for today's episode. I know I haven't gone through any cues in particular, but equalisation is very picky and really depends on your mix and instruments, so I really recommend playing around with equalisation with each section and instrument and seeing what sounds best for you. Thank you for watching, I hope you have found the video helpful and please be sure to subscribe for more videos.